Welcome back to the channel guys. I found a 2022 Ram 3500. This is going to be a limited and it is a crew cab long bag. Now this truck is going to be good for payload and it has a really good price point too. And I want to go over why that is. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now if you are on a budget and you would still like to have a higher trim level like this one, this base price is $69,250 for a gas engine. So just keep that in mind. Now, obviously, you have to add in destination to that price, but all in all, this truck is perfect because it does have the standard Cummins, so you're going to save a few thousand dollars here not getting the high output. And this truck does have a little bit more payload, which you'll see here in the video. But all in all, um, here are some of the options. You know, it does have this No Chief group, which gives you the uh, auxiliary switches and the transfer case skid plate. And the body color bumpers was a nice upgrade too, kind of delete some of the chrome. And then limited level one is your second most expensive package. And they have some pretty good technology features in here. That 6.7 Cummins, 9,400 bucks. The power deployable step, I actually forgot to show this in the video, but it is on the left hand side, out back, 365. And then this one does have this really good investment for your truck, 50 gallon tank, 295 if you want to get one off the market it's going to be about a thousand dollars plus not including insulation this one does have the air suspension at 1705 destination comes in at 1795 with a total price of eighty seven thousand seven hundred forty five dollars so as you guys saw on the window sticker you did have a front bumper painted option and rear bumper and this truck is finished off with a little bit of chrome i do not mind it as much but if I were to buy a truck like this, I would definitely get the blackout because I think it just looks so much better without the chrome. You do have the front tow hooks finished in chrome as well. And they have like a nicer look to them also. I'm probably going to be a little bit biased, but this does have the best looking grill since I do have a limited too. And you only get these headlights on the limited and the limited long haul. So if you get a Laramie down, there'll be a reflective style headlight. Now just below, you do have LED fog lights and they also put a lot of light out believe it or not and I like the slim design that they have too it has like that timeless look as you can see the parking sensors are hidden nicely on the front end and there is a forward facing camera which comes a part of that limited level one equipment group and these headlights do swivel they're full LED turn signals the whole nine and then off to the side you do have a 20 inch wheel with a Firestone tire. And these are gonna be a 285 60 20. And you're gonna have a solid front axle too up front. Now, because this has that 360 camera, you're gonna have cameras on the, each side of the mirrors. And you do have a chrome finish on this too with a little light. This does have a clearance lamp, which would be an option since this truck is not a dually and because this is a limited you have the power deployable steps now i'm going to make a little bit of ram guys upset i am not a fan of the long bed trucks i think that ford and gm make better looking long beds and i'm hoping that ram fixes this for the next generation this truck looks really like bland but i will say the chrome actually does help with this black truck. I think it looks really good with the chrome accents. But again, I think a black truck would just look amazing. So this would have a 32 gallon tank standard, but this one does have that 50 gallon tank option. And as you guys saw, the truck does have the air suspension too. I think the fender flares do help with the styling as well. Now out back you are going to have LED tail lights and it's going to be the reverse lamps, the stop lights, turn signals, the whole nine. So it's a really techy truck if you think about it. Now out back you do have a class five receiving hitch and they do have a newer input down here. Hopefully I can show it to you since it's raining today. But as you guys can see this is going to be a 12 pin connector here. And then you have your standard seven pin. And then this one also has a camera input too for the rear view mirror, okay? And you do have the backup camera. 
And then up top there, you're going to have two cameras on that high mount center light too, which is full LED. Now, as far as the bed goes, I'm very used to seeing, you know, the fifth wheel prep package already in here. It's been a long time since I've seen one without it. But you do have a 115 volt, uh, 400 watt cargo plug. And you do have a dampened tailgate. I would like to see that they allow you to put it back up from the key fob, but that's still not available. I don't know if you guys can see those airbags. It might be kind of hard since it's a little dark out here. Now, if you do get a single rear wheel ram, you only get a 373 rear axle. So just keep that in mind. If you want a 410, you would have to go to a dually. And I always mention this, but I like how the parking sensors are hidden down below. This truck does have the smart key system too. So if you push the button here, it'll lock it. And if you slip your hand in, it'll unlock it for you too. Here's just another side view of this big truck. This is a really, really big truck. I guess it didn't look too bad, but I guess they just need to add more flair. One thing I love about the air suspension too, is this truck looks level. And I think it's because the bed is um, probably in the lower setting, but it would rise back up if you were to go over 40, 50 miles an hour. Now let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. So here's how you save money and add payload to your Ram 3500 build. This is going to be the standard Cummins and it's going to have the 68 RFE 6 speed transmission. So this truck's going to be good for 370 horsepower, 850 pound feet of torque. That's a lot of power guys. Now one thing I'll say is this, a lot of people do like the reliability of the Eisen. I think that what Chrysler has done with this transmission has really taken it to another level. I believe the 66 RFE was the more unreliable transmission. So if you are looking for reliability, this 68 RFE is definitely that. I've met guys who do hot shot and they had four or 500,000 miles with no issues on the transmission and the trucks did have tunes on them too. So even with more power, they didn't have any issues overall with this truck. All right, so let's go ahead and look inside the truck. I'll show you guys the number for the truck here in a second, but um, what's new for 2022? If you are looking at a limited with a black interior, all of your accents inside the interior used to be bronze, like your door handles, the trim here, the speaker ground used to have like a bronze look to it, around the steering wheel, all that stuff was done in like a bronze color and now it's done in black and boy does it look a lot better like look at the overall bright black or it's like a black chrome design it looks so good my interior i have like the cream and navy blue color and i think that bronze color looks better but inside this truck you guys can pretty much tell this looks a lot more cleaner with the black interior so this black interior looks really good actually I think that if I were to get another truck, I'll go with black. Just because with the night edition, you have to get black interior. But I think I would still get my interior color if I did not get the night edition. So let's go ahead and start it up. This truck does have Uconnect 5, so I'll show you a few things inside of here. But let's just look at this screen. We won't go through everything, but I like to start here just because this is really good for people who do plan on towing. There's a lot of good information in here. Uh, I definitely do check this information periodically when I'm towing. And for the most part, I mean, nothing much has changed inside of here. Exhaust brake. This is my favorite one. This is the gauge summary. So when you're towing, you can just check all your temperatures. Please, Ford, GM, Toyota, everyone. This is what you need. When people are towing, when people are you know, going down the road, it's, just, it's a lot easier 
to have this up versus going through everything checking so I like that they do this and you have your engine hours you also have your tire pressure and then it goes back because actually the tire pressure was the first thing so um, this is something that's kind of changed this off-road page here so drivetrain and then they have the pitch and roll and then they have your driver assistance fuel economy I like this page too and then your trip information and you also have one for your trailer and then one for your trailer brake and your trailer light check so if you do have multiple trailers it does keep the distance for each trailer you just have to be sure to set it up in the system here let's see if I can find it easily because I don't have you connect five on my truck so let's go to settings let's see if we can find trailers yeah there it is so if you go to trailers so you have one two three four trailers you can set up here trailers around your camera you have that there too now one thing I'll say to you guys is I think that Ram's systems between these two screens are the best in the business and I do like GM's clarity like when you put their truck in reverse they have a better like clear camera view um, I feel like they have a high definition camera so it just shows up so nicely on the screen this isn't bad but it's not the best so I would like to see Ram you know maybe clean up that rear view camera a little bit better make it a little bit higher quality higher definition and here's some of your gauges. You can see your gauges here. This is something I don't have on my truck. So this is new for Uconnect 5. You also have the pitch and roll if you are going off-road. So there's a lot of cool features. I do like the home screen too with the Uconnect 5. They allow you to set up these widgets here. So if you want to put your, um, let's see, navigation in one. You can put your heated seats in another, right? And then your cold seats and your heated steering wheel will be there too. And then if you like, you can do your climate. So on my truck, right i like this better is you only can do a split screen for two so this is a really really cool system and they allow you to you know reorder your pages too i mean it's just really really intuitive so you can swipe it to the right here i'm gonna try it again so you can swipe it here so you have other pages too so again i think that if you're looking for you know a good Product. I think Stellantis is really you know leading the way there so moving on the media here's what you would see you do have a main page for your comfort and it does show your seat comfort features there too navigation you can do a full map view I'm still trying to figure out how to you know set up the trailer for like, if you want to see your trailer height put in here I'm trying to see how you do that I don't see that you can do that yet so hopefully I figure it out but for now it's just not available so I've gone everywhere too I've looked through everything and I just don't see where it's at so let's just keep moving on you can step your phone now you can do wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto now you weren't able to do that in the past and you know you do have a few cameras that you can set up I made a comment about Ram putting a button here for the cameras they did something a little bit better they actually have a favorite menu here so if you want you can just get to the cameras a lot quicker so I'm sure they didn't hear me say that I'm just glad that yeah I had a chance to you know say that in the video and so it looks like they're actually doing that now so if you put a star next to it it'll show up there uh, which one I would put in there is my cargo view camera so whenever I'm driving going down the road I get to my campground I put it in reverse you know it would be nice to be able to hit that button and then be able to to do that so this is actually not bad either so you the only thing I always say is it's kind of when you're under pressure it's hard to find the camera views but now that I've you know been towing more I'm a lot more experienced I don't even use these cameras anymore at all so you do have cameras on each side of the truck too you do have more cam views as you can see they also have something new they have a left cam you see that they didn't have this on my truck at the time so you can look on either side which is cool and then if you go back here let's go back one more time uh, if you want where is it at so if you do trailer reverse guidance you can actually you know move the cameras side to side too your conventional hitch you can zoom into that if you need to and you can also zoom in if you have like a fifth wheel 
you know, like from like a BMW turnover ball, if you have that in here, you can see that too pretty easily. For your trailer, here's a few other things here that you can look at. Um, if you do have the camera system on your trailer, like they do have side cameras now and they have trailer cams for like the back of the trailer too, like for this one right here. You, you can input that. I showed you the input for this little guy. So if you have that input on the back of the bumper, that's where the camera view would be at for that plug, basically. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you guys here. You do have an auxiliary camera here. So that's just something else that you have. There's just so many ways you can really feel comfortable towing the trailer with this truck. By the way, the truck just went into high auto mode too, just because I'm kind of sitting here. But you do have a trailer rig just below the screen. You have some auxiliary switches. You do have your air suspension if I push the button here's what it will say lowering to support and no, actually it says select right height not permitted due to payload so typically you have to put a load behind the truck but as far as all your towing features go you have tow haul mode exhaust brake you do have some parking sensors too when you do hook up to the seven pin plugs it does turn off your rear parking sensors automatically so it's very convenient and then I like what Ford does too with the auxiliary switches. I hope that Ram does something too where they put them up here. I just think it looks so much cooler. And then it, it doesn't take away from this. So um, I already showed you this camera view and your rear view for that. And then here's your vanities. And then actually let's go back over to this door because I didn't show you everything over here. So you do have, I, I don't show this a lot, but you do have LED lights on the mirror. So if I push this button right there, it'll turn them on. So if you're sitting in park or if you're in reverse, they'll actually come on automatically. But if you put it in the drive, it does turn them off, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now, if you wanna control that convex, like that convex is not in a good spot here. So I'm gonna, you see how you can move that too? Hopefully you can see it through that water. But you can control the convex. And the way you do that is you put it in left and then you push this button here. And then that way you can control it. So let's go ahead and finished off the center console you do have a charging station right here wirelessly you have four USBs type A and then type C's are smaller ones and deep storage really nice stuff here guys with the limited and longhorn you do get coverage for this but the Laramie down you don't you have one more USB down there and then you have a little bit more storage back here and this opens up to provide more storage with the LED light. And then the glove box has additional storage down below here. And that's pretty much it. I don't mention this either, but I took my carpet out of my all weather floor mat. So you can pop this out, that little carpet piece. And in the winter time, or like if you know you're going off road a lot, you can take that off so you don't get it dirty. So that's something that I would recommend if you have this truck. Now, as far as the rear goes, they only do provide heated seats back here still. In a half ton, they do have heated and cooled. You do get four type A type C's back here with a plug. You do have a plug up front too. I did not show that to you, but you do have a plug um, in that deep storage below where the screen is. And you do have a 60-40 split bench. There's only storage on this side. And actually, you know, I, didn't, I never noticed this, but this would be for your upfitter switches. And I think they should have something too for your, for your cameras too. I'm not sure, maybe not, but yeah, that's, that's the only real, like major storage out back here. And you do have it in the floor too. These little cubbies come out and yeah, this is really, a really nice truck I, I think that if um if i ever need to go to a six passenger if we have an extra kid or two i would have to get a lawnmower because you cannot get a six passenger in a mega cab and if i ever decide to get a bigger fifth wheel and i don't want to deal with you know coming too close to my cab i would definitely pick this truck so this truck's gonna give you the better uh payload so let me show you the numbers for the truck right now all right guys so you saw how you can save some money on this truck now let's go ahead and look at the numbers 
here. So as far as the gross axle weight rating in the front, it's going to be 6,000 pounds. The gross axle in the rear is going to be 7,000. Now this truck does have a 12,300 pound GVWR. All in payload capacity is going to be 3,947 pounds. So here's what I want you to understand. When you get a long bed truck, you are going to have a higher GVWR versus a short bed crew cap. So it's going to go up from 11.8 to 12.3. That's going to be 500 pounds. If you get the 68R fee over and not upgrade to the Eisen in high output, you get an additional 250 pounds there. So just keep that in mind. Obviously, if you don't get full wheel drive, you can pick up another couple hundred pounds here. So if you do need that payload, you can buy this truck. You save the money on the 68R fee and um, and just having just you know lesser weight gives you the payload that you need too. Now, as I went over the window circuit with you, you know another way you could save money is by taking off the uh, air suspension if you want to buy a limited on the budget. So this is some things to think about. I mean, this truck is priced nicely, so just be sure to give Fred Frederick a look up if you are in the market for a truck. They do have this one here. I'll try to post this video quickly so some of you guys have a chance to buy. But be sure to let them know you saw the video, and I will see you guys soon.